impression? John, what's your first impression? impression? Slicker. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Say something, son. Is Lawrence Wong the best choice for Prime Minister? This is your daily catch up. Lawrence Wong. Boom. Hey guys, hold up. Hey. If I you like the second. daily catch up podcast and you're not yet subscribed, subscribe. Please. Please. And thank you. Hello, John Paul, who is watching from home. <laughs> and Q seeing these edits. <laughs> <laughs> So the future of Singapore has a, uh, we have some indication of what that might look like because the PAP has just announced, or, or Lee Long rather, has announced who the leader of the 4G um, mm. group of like mm-hmm. leaders uh, in PAP will be. And it's none other than Lawrence Wong. Mr. Lorries. <laughs> how do y'all feel about that? Uh? Honest, honest. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. So I work with the government for a long time, right? But how about for, for y'all, like about the younger generation? How do you honestly feel about this selection? Oh, he said younger generation, so it's you guys. Huh? No, la, you're so younger. I feel la. like Lawrence Wong is the most social media savvy. And then it makes sense because they really, kind of want to appeal to the youth. I He's saw Chan Chun Sing is not even on any... I don't know, he don't have TikTok at least. No, and and Denise uses TikTok the most. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember seeing Ong Ye, Ong Ye Kong's one. Ong, Ong Ye Kong. Ong sure, Ye man. Kong. Let's go with that. Who? who? Ong Ong Ye Ye Sorry, who's Ong that? Ye Ong Ye Kong's. Ong Ye Kong's. She's bumbling already. Isn't it Ong Ye Kong? Ongi Kongs, Kongs. Okay, okay. Kong, okay. Kong, Kong, Kong. O- OYK, OYK. Mr. Ong. <laughs> if this were a different country, you're going to jail, eh? <laughs> oh, shit, really? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Ongi Kongs, Ongi Kongs. Yeah, anyways, I've seen his TikTok. Like, he's quite popular. Yeah, look, I would think he was the more social yeah. media savvy one. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm i sure I like them all. Okay, no. I, I like them all, and I'm sure that they're all great people. <laughs> But sure. <laughs> Lawrence but. Wong comes across, and maybe it's media training or what, but media, Lawrence Wong comes across a lot more genuine than the other two. Oh, but also, I had no idea who he was before COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he True. really exploded. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Like, 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 the multi ministry task force <laughs> yeah. helped really propel him to, to stardom. Uh. Stardom. <laughs> stardom. <laughs> because, like, we had to watch him, like, all the time, like, with all the, the mm. announcements, right? And he's, like, that figurehead that led us to. You, you know, think he excited about this? <laughs> Oh, he's like, like what an honor but who the who wants this job though he's so stressful. stressful but he did come out and say not stress but they this is like the peak of your though. political career though like if you are a politician there's no higher you can go than pm and he yeah. felt as though he fell into the spot right because like before this he was supposed to be hang sweet cat then after it was like chan chun singh then suddenly it's like out of nowhere through the ashes <laughs> yeah, wow, the the story. Story. I, I feel like if this were another country, to be honest, where whichever government is in term, right, we just sail. Like it would be a fun job, right, be a right, cool right, job. Right, right. But this one is like what every term is make or break for the country. <laughs> <laughs> it's <Wow>. damn scary. <laughs> yeah, like, it's it's damn shit jobs, yeah. But speaking of multi ministry task force, right, I've seen like I don't know whether Reddit or Facebook like, like comments that say he is a very safe option. That this, yeah, some people, the older people, okay, I don't know whether the older people, la, some, the, the commenters who I assumed were older people don't really like him because they say he takes a very conservative approach. I like, never really like do anything that pushes the needle or what and doesn't seem like he's going to do anything like that. Right. Mm. Hey, how do you all feel? Please let me know. But do we need anything now? Like, do we need to, <laughs> do we need him to do something now? Like, or yeah, just I feel like we are in the capital preservation stage, right? As uh, opposed to the... I mean, Both. it's okay to be status quo, right? To keep status quo. But does it not feel like a stagnation? Like, it feels like, maybe for example, in comparison to China, right? Which has, like, mm. pff, in the last 30 years, mm. fighting with US as world superpowers now. Versus Singapore, who inclined during Lee Kuan Yew's time, maybe somewhat plateau so far. And then it's just gonna go on like that. But was Lee Sen Long that much of a, like, a change maker? Like, is yes, he Yes, though. No way. Okay, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. Hey, you're no, gonna feel like this some branded Malgama Malpi thing. It's not, it's not. No, no, but, but perhaps. But I, I feel very strongly for the leaders. <laughs> Actually, the most important thing, ho, for the PM, it's really representing Singapore on the global stage mm. and the ability to win votes. Eh. Mm. Cause I and that, right? That's that's the best two things you can do to enable your team to continue to do great things. Cause like our civil service is not a computer where you input shit, then shit happens, but right. There's also brilliant minds that we are constantly recruiting and grooming to make civil service great in Singapore. Mm. Yeah. But then, which is why I read quite an interesting headline that's saying like, uh, the PM's position is Lawrence Lawrence Wong's to lose. Well, that's very hard to say. Yeah. It was actually on uh, the Washington PM's Post. The PM's position is Lawrence yeah. Wong's to lose. Yeah. It was an American like newspaper that actually wrote that. 
Yeah, because he's not elected yet, ma. So if say he never get elected at the next elections, then we just don't have a, a leader. Or they have to choose again. They, they will choose another leader, but it looks really bad. Yeah. On, on the PAP because I think that the problem was that Hing Swee was already primed to be the next Prime Minister right and yeah. then <laughs> and then uh, the whole East Coast thing happened and he, even though he won East Coast the, the margin was so thin that they said oh this is not enough mandate for right. Hing Swee no lah but I don't think it was that though I think it was the East Coast plan no it was the no, the, the opposition that oh. that competed there also no it's true so like they put him there so that Nicosia. they can like like Nicosia was, was yeah, at Nicosia, the same jersey. Right. But then I felt like a lot of talk, like when you were watching the coverage on like CNA and like Straits Times and all, right? They kept saying, wow, the margin is actually really thin. Is this Singapore people saying that we don't want him as PM? Right. And I'm sure that would have like. CNA said like. that, man? No, I, I like oh. some analysts. <laughs> last, hey, no, hey, don't don't yeah. no, no. it, it was on one of the channels, then analysts like. Right, right, right. But apparently, it was also a very, if I remember correctly, it was a very last minute change or so for him. He, was, he only he found was, out the morning yeah. before. Oh, wait, no, Shams knows. Yeah, yeah. So I was working on a campaign video for him, with Ooh. him, the day before. No, then, no, then, <laughs> so I thought like, okay, he's gonna, I will see him tomorrow, the next day, right, for a live video, but then he was not here. Like, only in the morning when I got up, right, I got a text like, oh, Heng Suikei is not with us anymore. He's like, hey, don't <laughs> say that, hey, 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 yeah, so but what? <laughs> now I lost my thoughts. <laughs> I didn't mean that. No, She's like, so scared now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> In a different conversation, you were saying that you wanted to be a politician. Oh, oh. yeah, I wanted to be a politician when I was younger. Really, really. How young? Uh, <laughs> Two years old. You're not very old now. Eh? Like, hey, like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. What the like f- she never received this many compliments yeah. in a single day before. Like in maybe in J C H. Oh, that's not that young. Yeah. So okay. like I was, I told my mom like it, it was so I was so ready to be a politician. Right. I went down to the nearest R C my house. Right. Then I talked to the lady. Sign up to be minister. No, I talked to the lady there. <laughs> I talked to the lady there, and then she gave me a part. I told her like hey, I want to be, I want to volunteer. I want to see mm. how is it like to mm. be here. She like oh sure sure sure. She gave me a paper. I wrote my name all. Then I went home right to tell my tell my mom right. I'm like mommy, I want to do this. Then she tell me like why you want Mikepo. Why you want to do that kind of thing? Yeah, then I'm like, huh? Why, why is this capable? Yeah, so she discouraged me. She said, you want to do whatever you also want to do. So she killed your dream? Yeah, she said, don't be a politician. Like, I think something that I think John might have mentioned either on, on this show or like another show like Trade-Offs or whatever, right? Like, um, on Falcon Post, which is that like, a lot of the MPs that we have elected, right? Mm. Are the ones that come from the private sector, right? They came from higher paying jobs and more prestigious jobs to come and become politicians, right? Where they have to every four or five years beg for votes get yeah. kernel from <laughs> kernel from the public from doing what they think is the right thing for the country you know and so it's like it's damn shack like you kernel just the most it's quite shitty one because eh? you go back right you can imagine there's some form of emotional blackmail ma. Mm. <laughs> like when any of them want to quit which is from time to time, right? Not say they all Wait, do their they first thing. Oh, yeah. yeah, they, they can quit. They can go where? Like, they just go back to their normal Private lives. sector. They're like, done already. They can retire already. Uh, uh, they can just do talks. <laughs> you know, just go to talk. I'm just thinking about like Obama, you know, now he's like on podcasts and stuff. But it's such a shit feeling, right? Like, you go out there where you are CEO, like big company, like... Or top shot lawyer. Ah. Uh, so come back for votes. Shit. Mm. They, basically right like they get a lot of shit and sure a lot of their policies may be really difficult right but they don't need to be doing this job essentially mm. oh yeah, yeah then the blackmail stuff like you're thinking like maybe I'm done already like, or maybe the people don't want us you know then all it takes is a, like a little new figure to tell them but you see what the people don't see <laughs> because you have an, you have the experience and education that many of the people don't have so you have to do like for your country then what well, is like you, you, you think you're doing this for the people but the people don't want you eh yeah. they want Lotia Kiang you know what I'm saying they want opposition to make noise in parliament, which is like fair enough lah for any man to be like, you know what, I'll go back to be a CEO then. I do know quite a few people who vote opposition for the sake of it. Yeah. Like I, just so I, I there so. is opposition voice. Yeah. Yeah. You it's right? Good, eh? No, <laughs> I love you, eh? PAP. My uh. mother say first time vote must vote PAP. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what my father would tell me and my grandfather would tell him to go and vote uh, opposition so that PAP don't have full control, right? Yeah. Then yeah. after they go out the, the voting booth, right? My father will ask him who you vote. He said, of course I vote PAP, you sell. <laughs> 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 
Anyway, on Reddit, uh, after the news came out, there were some anecdotes regarding um, Lawrence Wong. So mm. like one person actually said, I approached him for some assistance at a Meet Your MP uh, once uh, about 1.5 years ago. And he was very kind to me when I explained my situation and very encouraging. At the same time, I could see him getting frustrated and perplexed at some other resident's problem. It's quite interesting. So it was quite obvious that he didn't like to deal with people who dug their own graves. For example, an old couple who decided to sell their flat without making plans for the future, but were demanding that he find them a rental flat immediately. Mm. So like, clearly, I think if you need help and it really seems warranted, like he was someone that was very, very kind to others. But if you dug your own grave, essentially, then he was quite frustrated. Uh, Mm. I saw him dealing with a young lady facing issues paying for education. His determination to solve the issue was awesome. The tone he took speaking to the young lady was different from some other people. So that's quite nice. Mm. Um, Someone else wasn't that uh, that, that happy about the news. I guess any news because they said, is there any real uh, difference between uh, Lawrence Wong, Ong Kang or or Chan Chun Singh? They're all socially and politically conservative, all absolutely uncharismatic, all unlikely to take any risk in any circumstance and all unlikely to implement policies which are pro-workers and improve mental health of Singaporeans. Uh, All bland and uninspiring. Hater. I feel like Chan Chun Singh has very two extreme camps. So one feels like he's, I mean, based on what I've heard, like he's overly ambitious. Yeah, and then, but the other camp feels like he dares to say as it is. Like I think even with the whole Xia Sui incident, right? It yeah. kind of created mm. that, that two factions. One is like, hey, how can a minister speak like that? But the other one is that, hey, he's saying it as it is. Right? Mm. So he's mm. that, we want that honesty. We want you know, that unfiltered. Chan Chun Singh's fan base, uh. <laughs> if I can call it that, uh, right? Was that when he was sick gen of, of NTUC, right? I went to many of his talks uh, as, as media or they try and get us to learn to understand because Vulcan Post covers like workfare issue, right? Oh, Brother John. <laughs> oh, yeah, they, that, that was damn strange, eh? <laughs> hey, were you with me? I wasn't. Yo, that was damn strange. That's the strangest thing about PAP, guys. No, they call you brother. No. Brother John. Ew, wait, wait, let me, let me get to that. So, Chan Chun Singh was, was in that sense very good because he's very executional and he speaks with all the their their the what what do you call it? union leaders mm. and he really was very good there and that's where a lot of his fan base like the outspoken people that come out there and defend him right I realized they all came from there because I dig dig a bit right mm. but anyway at my first NTUC rally oh it was fucking strange because for those of you that don't know right NTUC uh, has a what they call a symbiotic relationship with PAP mm. yeah so they have this symbiotic relationship so they have this rally right so if you are wondering um on May Day right which is where the unions really come together celebrate Labour, like a Labour Day, right? <laughs> the, the, I think the PM comes, right? And mm. many of the, obviously the sec gens are always there, right? And then they, they call each other like, a brother Daniel, I'd like to invite our brother Denise. Thank you, uh, uh, Sister hey. Denise. Uh, sorry, <laughs> i like to thank Sister Denise uh, for, for that. Then, like when I remember, I think PM was there. And then they didn't call PM PM, they call him Brother Sian Long. Call oh. Lan <laughs> 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 yeah, he's living without it's, the surname. It's mad cringe because it feels like we live in a different era and it's like some little cult there. <laughs> yeah. When the news came out, um, the opposition parties all had very passive aggressive uh, messages. Is it? I didn't yeah. see a single one. Yeah, yeah. So there was, a, I, I mean, a, a, I, I, I didn't see a WP one, but most of them were like, congratulations to Lawrence Wong. But here's all the problems. So like the SDP one, for example, right, was, uh, was uh, let me. Who leads hey. SDP now? Uh, Chi Sun Juan. Chi Sun Juan, right, right, right. Okay, so SDP was like, the SDP congratulates Mr. Lawrence Wong on his selection as the PAP, uh, next PAP leader and potential prime minister. However, while the party has finally announced his new leader, it means worrying for Singapore as we head into the future because uh, Mr. Wong appears to be uh, substantively no different from his colleagues. Decades of groupthink and conformity has made PAP leaders unable to see that Singapore is in dire needs of reform in its economic, social, and political systems. Uh, and they mm. begin to like bring up a whole bunch of different problems. Uh. Um, As a young person, do you, do you feel that way too? Actually, which is why my question is just now like, are we in need of a change maker, right? It feels like what they're pointing out is yes. Yeah, but then I'm right. not sure. Like we, it feels like we are in a good place. So I'm not sure what is this specific change that we need to bring us to the so-called next level. But right. it does feel to me like we are stagnating. So like according to according to SDP, they, they feel like um they they need and uh we need, we need according to them enlightened governance, one that relies on openness and de- democracy instead of its archaic quote unquote practice of intimidation and manipulation. Um, which is what they are I feel like about. I always wonder okay I, I remember this like newspaper headline right but I cannot find it anywhere which Lee Kuan Yew said that uh, PAP will rule for the next 99 years at least and then I always think about like hmm, in my lifetime am I ever going to see opposition come into power right. and then when it does right 
I feel like people have the impression that like, wow, things gonna change or reform all that. But then in reality, yeah, it's yeah, likely yeah. gonna be more of the same. Mm. Just that maybe different things that people are Slightly more passionate different. about yeah. are just more talked about and then that's about it law. But, mm. but essentially like the foundation of how we work, works, works well. Yeah. So then that will not change. Ma. Then what is the difference even? And then why don't we just be one giant party? Yeah. No, then they will then we have a party. <laughs> like the, the people's fear is that you will one party will exploit ma, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's but why so we need far some the track record has shown. But that it's Singapore only. It's so it's okay. Yeah. It's really Singapore only. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That like also I also ask myself as a young person, like, eh, how come if let's say like Pritam seems to be quite talented, mm-hmm. right? Why don't Pritam join? Mm-hmm. And then we just cut all the party yeah, lines, yeah, 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 then you represent the people and all that shit, right? Uh, uh, uh. After eh, then you become a single party system, that's communist rule already, ma. Mm. Right. Yeah, then, yeah. Yeah. At the same time, if one party member keeps obstructing whatever, like how productive else is, yeah, is it? Then we we just don't move anything, and no one actually wins from that. Yet we are seen as a communist government, as opposed to actually you okay, If you really against, go an- go another party, lor. But then honest, we vote, lor. Mm. But honestly, right. I wonder if we currently like take a poll, right, on how democratic is Singapore. I feel like it's really up in the air what the answer is, though. Agree. But I'm okay with that because democracy itself is a flawed system. Communism. So, yes. Oh my god, you're dressed. You're dressed yeah. exactly like the t-shirt. Oh yeah. Wow, you just gave me a. <laughs> when, when you did that, I had like Mao vibes. Yeah, like Kevin. Wow. Like, you know what I'm talking about, no? The head, the head is exactly this shape, man. This, but show this, this to my, my mom. So she rare, will love you know? me. <laughs> Yeah. No, I think the other thing like we, we, we might have spoken about in a really old episode where like the opposition themselves don't field enough people in enough GRCs to actually become the prime minister or become the ruling party. Mm. Which says enough, I guess. Either they don't have the resources or they don't think that they can take on the PAP. Mm. I have and I've ever done an interview with Brett Boyer, who maybe is not the most reliable source, right? But then he watches this show. That he, oh yeah, Thank he you, Mr. Brett Boyer, for watching this show. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Yeah, so but something that he mentioned that was quite interesting is that as a young politician, when you want to make change, right, the party you join is PAP because they are the biggest money. It's like you want to make change, you go to there and then you work things out from the inside. But then after that, maybe you kind of start realizing that hey, this party is like saturated, like maybe it's a bit difficult to get your voice heard. Then you feel like it's not working and then you move somewhere else. So I wonder whether it's that same like disillusionment that people have. It's very interesting you brought that up because I think that was kind of the discussion. Okay, we don't know whether it's true, but that was kind of where the discussion was going when um a clip of Vivian Balakrishnan came up of him <sighs> very, very young, right? And he seemed very, very passionate about um I can't remember what the, the cause was, but he seemed really passionate about it. And then a lot of people were saying, like, hey, what happened? Like we don't see the same um fire. Yeah, mm-hmm. fire. I mean I mean it it that doesn't have to be disillusionment, like it could just be um, a maturity, I guess, of ideas and know right. what's practical and, and, and like understanding, or perhaps. But on that yeah. note, right? Like, I really looked up to. I'm not looked up. Like, I think he was one of the politicians that I quite liked. Like, I feel like he was a great like orator, right? Even when it came to like the recent debate, which was my first voting, ma, So that's the first one that I follow. But then after that, with the whole RI scandal, then it really threw me off. Eh. But that one thing, right? But does it not make you human, my though? Whole impression of him. Similar do we, to do we think our ministers are all saints, though? I don't know. Eh. I feel like do we need saints for ministers, though, or do we even? effective planners, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. Mm, but Th- ministers, they influence policy and then so if their thinking is elitist, right. then does that not affect our policies? Right. Yeah. I, I I like what you're saying though with like, you know, like that, that one impression that you had from from, from Vivian that just completely like changed you because like, I think with Chan Chun Singh, that was kind of the main problem, right? Like, I think there was articles that showed that he was really quite liked by the people and mm. then when he came across as someone that was like super brash and like you know super singlish and like all that right suddenly his prospects of becoming PM changed and mm. it was all it took was that one like impression you know mm. which is which is so crazy to think that like I've been thinking about this a lot because I've also watched a recent movie everything everywhere at all at, all at once right and it's like so what you, do you watch okay 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 okay, okay. <laughs> The Michelle Yeoh movie, anyway, so it doesn't matter. So like, like your impression of someone is like formed from just seconds or like minutes that you spend with them, right? And it's only like a 0.0001% of the of their entire life. It's not representative of who they are, but you immediately make a judgment of who they are. Mm. And it's so crazy because that person might have had a bad day, might have, you know, like problems at home or whatever, and they might have just brought it into the workplace or like wherever they are, they are giving a talk or whatever. For that one moment, they immediately get judged for it. 
like another example is like for example if if a project leader suddenly comes into a meeting and just says hey you know what guys this is what we're going to do we're going to do this this and this and it's because maybe there was pressure from uh, from upstairs or pressure revenue wise to just be efficient like at this point of time right then it's so easy for the team to go wow this team leader don't like to listen to feedback or don't listen, mm. like to crowdsource ideas mm. uh, just want to give us like but it's just like no lah like you don't see the full pictures yeah and it's just something that really gets because I know that there have been instances where I maybe I snapped at someone or what, and then mm. now I feel like I regret the moment because that person maybe has a really bad impression on me, mm. or like. I feel yeah. like I've had the moment where I've heard of the person from some other people. Most likely it's a rant, right? So mm. I preformed this very poor impression of the person, such that when I actually meet the person in real life, what without even that? giving them a chance to kind of. Mm. make friends or whatever whatever they say right i just kind of take a negative connotation to it or what yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm guilty of that like, it's not a good thing but then when i finally like recognize that and then actually kind of give them a shot most of the time they're actually nice people like, decent yeah. people so i also kind of wonder like what is like the mm. one impression that people have of you like if you talk oh. about maybe first impressions i don't have like what do you mean like it's either i have preformed an impression mm. of you based on like whether I heard of you many times or what. Mm -hmm. But if not, right, if you say I go to office in my first time meeting you, right, maybe like, I just hear your name, then like that's about it. Mm. It's a defining impression, right? Not so much your... Yeah, correct. Like, I don't really have first impression. I really forget already our uh, first time we meet. Unless it's, <laughs> I mean, unless it's something very special, like, but yeah. yeah. I feel like people have a very bad first impression of me. I don't know why. I just operate from that assumption. Okay, I don't have Shams. What is your first impression <laughs> of him? Of then. I think very nice. Oh. Like, honestly, like, there's no... Wow, I'm very surprised. Yeah, I think you're very easy to talk to. Is this how you fish for compliments? I really am ask really me, not. <laughs> I'm really not. Wait, what's John, your, what's your first, first impression? impression of S Flicker. Nice! Oh. <laughs> I've tasted a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> start, what a start. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no but, but that, was, that was not formed by my interaction with you. It was formed by what I've heard about you. Oh. And then I'm an S Flicker. Oof. A bit. Huh. Huh. Mm. Oh no, I wonder what is the impression of me that people talk about behind my back. Oh, that's a good stress. Yes. No, wait, here's, here's the thing. No one cares about you enough to talk behind your back. You care more about yourself than anybody else does. Yeah. You gotta ask someone one. You gotta ask. And then you force them to think about something bad about you. <laughs> but everyone still cares about themselves. Unless they have a crush on you, like, then they're thinking about you all the time. Mm. <laughs> okay. No, la, it's, just, it's just, yeah. I think I was just very self-conscious like recently about interactions I've had in the past. You know, I'm the kind that like, I would like see in bed and I would just play back like regrets. Cringe moments that I've like, had so, in my life. Do you make sound? I sometimes have those cringe moments, right? <laughs> where I'd be like, <coughs> like, I, <laughs> I need, like I want to black, right? But, but yeah, alone, ma, I just make a sound and cap it. Like, oh, <coughs> I just go, you f***ing stupid idiot, Daniel. No, I'll probably cringe about this cringe moment tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. There was like a moment that I insulted a teacher. There was a moment that I think I insulted like a friend by accident. I think there's a moment where like, Right. Really insulted a friend, and then yes. I don't realize that like five years later, and then it's too late to like say sorry. Then like, you're like, oh my god, that person thinks I'm really rude or like I have no filter. But then it's like I just really just couldn't form my words. If I had the same problem, right? And then I met up the friend, like I re reach out to her and tell her like, oh let's meet up, and then I apologize to her like the things that happened five years ago. Mm. Yeah, she said, huh, I'm totally fine. I just say I know you're fine. I just like I just want to tell she's you. She's not. She's not. She's very glad. She the remembers. fact that she remembered. Yeah, she remembers. Oh. She would have been, huh? I don't even remember but that. But the polite thing to do is like, huh? I know, I didn't even, hey, don't worry about it, man. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm like, okay. But I'm glad I'm I still, you like, this. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. continue to do that. That's a good thing to do. Yeah. Awesome. What a yeah. great takeaway. <laughs> like, just, just apologize. Yeah, actually, I, I remember going through one year where I just apologized to everyone that I remembered, like, saying something wrong to. Huh. Yeah, even I'm like, I'm waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> even like when I was like, I think like 11 or 12, I remember a girl cried because I inadvertently bullied her, even though I didn't realize. Right. You do? Oh my god, speaking of, I have a very same situation. I don't know whether I've speak, spoken about it in a past episode, right? But because the clique that I was with in primary school was ostracizing another classmate, oh. right? Then I kind of joined in on that. Lah. So actually, Group thing. I think that part got cut out. But right after the episode came out, right? She followed me on Instagram. Yeah. <gasps> oh. I, no, so then like, Did you I, DM her? Like I wanted to, but then no, I don't know what to say. Count. I don't care what you say after that. Yeah, then, so I didn't. <laughs> la. But then yeah, la, I wanted to, but I feel like, how do I start this? And somehow it's so long ago, but at the same time, I don't know how shaping, how much this experience mm. back then has shaped her life going forward. Ma. Then yeah. I mean, best case scenario, she's like, thanks, Denise, I really appreciate this. Or then worst case scenario is like, a, do you know you really <laughs> f me up good? <laughs> no, but the fact that she follow you means that she wants to see you in her yeah. feed and in her life. Mm. How I would have messaged, but again, I don't know your dynamic would be like, hey, it's you. We've never spoken since like them. <laughs> like yeah, so I'll be like, hey, 12, do you follow back? Catch up, yeah, yeah. Okay. It just catch up. Catch up. 
like daily. <laughs> yeah. I, I try to make make joke. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can tell her that I brought up a story with you, and I think my editors didn't air it. But I just wanted right. you to know that I feel bad for that. There you go. Okay, mm. good advice. Okay, yeah. Then that. you make it close look. Yeah, don't don't let her add on. Don't give her an opportunity to add on in that sense. If she wants to, she will still anyway. But make right. it close loop. In a way, you're optimizing for her to say thanks, Denise. Done. Mm. Yeah. That's great mm. advice. Good counsel. You know, la- last time I... Wow, completely unrelated. <laughs> That's the way. <laughs> last time, right? I want, there's, there's a trick to make small talk, man. You learn this along. Please tell me. As you get older. Or rather, there are, there are ways not to make small talk. I'm really I've, bad I've at small talk. Part. I'm going to go again. I'm so bad at small Pat talk. Pat and I was in Taiwan. So you know those walking streets of Taiwan, right? And then like we should in Taiwan. Like those those Shilin, those night market. Oh. They, they really go for kilometers one lah. Yeah, 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 Taiwan, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Okay. And so I remember it was like two, three a.m. already, and Pat and I wanted to get a, a foot massage lah. So I went to the the place sit down, and genuinely I am okay. I'm biased for old people. Like I automatically give you plus three respect if you are older, right? And there's this there's this older lady that's not in uniform. She just came in with a handbag. She wearing like quite quite proper like you know the rest wear their, their the polo tee that says like whatever foot reflex right, but she just came like that. Then she was just massaging and she here and there is like that kind of thing. So so I felt bad lah. Then as a young person, I feel like it feels like my grandmother is giving me a foot massage at two a.m. Mm. So it's that kind of shit feeling, you know. So I decided to make small talk. So I say, your how long is the shift lah? So it's like I'm telling you things not to do, okay? So <laughs> just in case the people start thinking uh, down. Low. So then so she's like. Uh oh, until six o'clock. Then I ask this dumb f- question, right? I say, um, I say in Chinese, uh, you must be very tired. Uh, <laughs> While she's massaging my leg, right? And then she said in Chinese, "Lea, blea, lea." Then after she tells you that, right, at two three a.m. already, right, where she's so exhausted. Why would you think I'm not exhausted? I'm so exhausted. Then what do you do from there? Uh, no, honestly though, what do you do from there? Do you continue? You I'll you just continue. Right? You're asking whether her shift ends so you can answer <laughs> later. <laughs> no, it's like, like this yeah. done and she's looking down, she's not expecting an answer. She's just like, so do I, do I stand and leave? Yeah. Does that piss you off? Or what, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what to do. So, so I realized, do do? I just, just sat there and finished my hour lah. Cause that myself was not good. I just, okay. Huh? My takeaway was that I was not going to tell her Auntie Tali uh. Tieno. <laughs> but I just sat there and just, Sammy enjoyed the rest of it. But she was just sighing very audibly, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to small talk, right, because that is a really imp- like important part of like first impressions. Like you go networking, right? And then you have to meet a complete stranger. And yeah. then you really have to like just start talking and it's just the most awkward thing ever. You go out with a friend and then that friend brings another friend that you don't know. Then that your your mutual friend, right, leaves and goes to the toilet, then now you gotta talk to this person. No, oh, the like most awkward one. one is when your friend meet their friend on the streets. Then they start oh, talking. Then you, then you stand one side. Then they introduce you. Yeah, I always just walk. I always just walk. I continue walking. I continue walking. Oh, then yeah. leave the friend behind. Leave the friend behind because they, they never people, introduce you. They can, yeah, correct. Oh. I wait until if I'm introduced. What, what if it's Ned or Pat, but they never introduce you? Oh. Pat will always introduce me. <laughs> okay, he never said that about Ned. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Say something, son. <laughs> I'll okay. wait with Ned. We'll go for a commercial <laughs> break. <laughs> I wonder if any of the ministers are real friends. Oh, like like they actually the like text each other or like go for coffee that kind. Hey, what's up, bro? Tired lah today. Lay out, guys. Lay out, lay. And also, I was just wondering. Can you imagine being like interviewed by Lee Kuan Yew? Stress. Yeah. Wow, can't imagine. Not, uh. Imagine Lee Kuan Yew being interviewed by Gen Z. Oh shit! It would be the most disruptive like conversation ever. Yeah. <laughs> He he did though. Huh? Talk to a Gen Z. I mean not not Gen Z because Gen Z's probably were not his lifetime. talking yet, right? <laughs> <laughs> Eloquent then. Not yeah, but, but he did. I think one of his very later years, maybe three years till D Day kind. Oh, D Day. Let's give it another meaning, huh? Um, he he sat down with a bunch of like students and student activists mm. to ask him any questions. No holds bars with Lee Kuan Yew, and he also in the end came back. <laughs> Yeah, because like he, they keep asking like pointed questions that forces him to take a side. Oh. Yeah. So if you pick A, then he's like, oh, you don't care about B kind of questions. Oh. Yeah. So he then he's just very sharp. Oh, he just got it. Even at that age. Yeah, yeah exactly. I was quite amazed. Eh. He just talks very slow. Actually, at his age, you realize right, everything just slowed down. The quality of answer was the same. Mm. Mm. He took <laughs> 20 seconds to reply. Actually, Gen Z quite 
is way more politically well, active. Of course, we are social activists. Yeah, than, <laughs> than millennials. Eh, I feel agreed, like. agreed. So many channels that was created to try and explain what's happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, like the previous um, election, right? Right, the latest one. Someone did like an entire Google Docs yeah, on all the campaigns, was what went wrong. Oh, what, yeah. I so like, it was just um, like shared around. Then I went to read like, before I vote, right? Oh, okay, this one, this one. <laughs> like, you know right. what I mean? Yeah, I think it's done by one of the Gen Z's also, actually. The moment that solidified in my mind that I wanted to vote for PAP, which is not my mom. Your vote like, is secret, eh? You can stop saying that. Your vote is not secret. You think your vote secret? Your vote is secret. Huh, really? It's but also sacred, but okay. Yeah. It's good. Is, is it because it, someone told you that you have to vote for PAP so that you don't ruin your chances of getting a house? No. Because it's not true. <laughs> Wait, why is my vote no, secret? secret? Why I cannot say? Oh, I in okay, 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 fine. You, you can, can you can, can say, say like if you want. Oh. Okay, anyway. Say, yeah. yeah, but then so there was this rally that my friend went to, right? That after she came back and shared with me and she said that the opposition party, I don't know which party, said that if I get elected, I'm going to combine MOH and MOD to save costs because that all our soldier can be nurse. Then I like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> then yeah, it's really important to go out and vote, guys. <laughs> <laughs> then at that moment, right, I'm like, oh no, is this the quality of opposition? But is Which, it I mean, now that's not the case, not for the main opposition. Yeah. But yeah. I think it's because all the smart people at the end of the day go to PAP, right? I mean, I think but like- You're uh, gonna leave a mark, uh, la, correct? Yeah. If you are a very smart person, right, and then you join the opposition, the, honestly, you just look like activists. Yeah. That's quite sad. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, what does that say about us, though? That's quite sad. Oh no, ending mm. this video on a sad note. Hi, guys, tell me who you voted down below. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's secret. <laughs> is it really? I don't believe. Kelvin, no, but is even it then, right, even then, I think the, the thing at the back of my mind, right, is that all of us have kind of t- taken a very, like, PAP, like, um, leaning stance, right? Mm. And. I still know that there are gonna be people who will be like, "Wow, this this podcast is super biased." Wow, you guys are you guys are indoctrinated. I mean, we, we are, uh, yeah, yeah, are but we? you guys are too like indoctrinated into like the PAP way to like see the truth or whatever, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, is it us or is it? But maybe we know? are, no? We do, we don't because honestly, honestly, right? I feel like whoever party wins sets the system. If you benefit from the system, you like the party, oh. yeah. Fair enough. And it, the question been, is, do you benefit from the system? We've been lucky enough to have like, mm. and maybe there are others that don't and. It's understandable why they're against it. La. Turns out your vote is secret, guys. Don't comment down below <laughs> what you vote <laughs> for. That's why you were desperately searching. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks yeah. for watching. Okay, anyway, so now that you all know Denise's secret. <laughs> <laughs> for the previous election only, who knows what I'll vote next? Nice. <laughs> Back for my votes! <laughs>so uh, the one that we did about uh, four day work week whether it's possible or not in Singapore Adrian CL said most of the time when I finish my task right I will be punished by getting like, like being given more work to do and the people around me pretend to have something to, to work on so that they don't get punished uh, and then that means my task will never ever end uh, because my lead will keep giving me work to do leave your company <laughs> your find, company find sucks yeah. No, but is it not true though that like your reward for con- completing something is to get to try something harder? Because if not, then how are you growing? But you are crazy. No, but though. that's not trying something uh, harder. Yeah. Wait, why? Why is it crazy? Like, it's I, crazy though. I, yeah. I, I think also I had so like a friend of mine, like a really close friend of mine, also was talking to me the other day where like he just recently entered the workforce, right? And then he joined a team, and then because that team existed before him, right? And he can finish the task so much faster than everyone else. The team said, please don't, please don't submit early because then, right? It looks bad on us. That oh. we are not yeah. finishing fast enough. Actually, just submit un- when like the end of day. Yeah. You know, and it's very toxic lah because. And like, it, and it's not just this kind of high value jobs or like thinking jobs. I, I used to work at um, like some packing center, like we just resale silicon chips and some shit like that. You start a pile and it's very therapeutic because you really is mindless one. It's just. Just put the vacuum sealing machine in. It'll be a really good TikTok series, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it will fly today, that kind. So it's just very brainless, but you're dealing with hundreds and hundreds of these at a time, and. I want to finish my stack and leave. Like, I don't want to come here then I forgot where I start, where I stop, right? Mm. But those people there from all over the world, from Malaysia, from China, from uh, Indonesia, and then they will tell me uh, to stop. You mm. must stop work. Mm. If not, all of us, they will, they, they will question us and say why he can work and you cannot work. Mm. We, we knock off work at 6, right? At 5.45, right? They all come and wash pen. And then they say in Chinese, they say, ah, see so, see so. Like, let's all go and wash hands. Then because there's only a few basins and like 50 of us or 60 of us, right? we will queue up and wash hand at 601 tap card go eh. Because yeah. it's not on company time, like, I guess you're not paid for it. It feels even ah, more efficiently inefficient. Mm. Yeah. You're not even paid to you you want to they like the point of being paid is to wash hand also. Yeah. 
Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, on that exact same episode, there was a similar comment also, uh, but directed at you. So, um, by uh. Low Perty. <laughs> Uh, I hate the part where John said about asking if other people need help. I understand that we are in a team, we have to work together, but if I finish my part, I should be able to go home on time. Why do I need to add to my load? I think I think it really depends on what industry you're in though. Mm. For us, it's very much qualitative. And even though everybody is given one task, the task varies in complexity. True, true. And I feel like if it's creative, yeah. more hits, being able to brainstorm on something helps like if that's the scenario that we're in if someone yeah. needs help like yours could be straightforward the other one's not straightforward right? so then the value of it would be why you always get the easy job mm. for example or why you right. always get the more straightforward job because there will be simple briefs and there will be complex briefs mm. yeah sure. actually like based on this subject matter also, right, I feel like if I'm very efficient with my job and then I end up having excess time what I will try to do is acquire projects right or tasks right that I'm interested in growing in Right. So I'll go and try to develop new things. I will look at the business as a whole and see like, oh, is this something that I want to learn? Can I go and help with this particular project and then put yeah. myself there? Some, then that's where something I that you otherwise will not be assigned to do yeah, on a yeah, day-to-day yeah, yeah. basis, correct, right? Correct. Still yeah. helping the company, but in a, in a way that you choose. Lah. Yeah, lor. Uh, there is a slightly lengthy one of the episode about is IT really worse than uh, Polly and JC? So I'm going to summarize it a little bit. Okay, it's from Samuel CWM. He's really saying like, I think... Uh, he thinks about it this way, right? If his child can't go to ITE, he'd rather the child not go at all. Um, my take is that don't glorify not giving your best. Understand there is a value to our education system and give your effort first. His two cents. Actually, I agree. Give some effort first, sorry, I mean. Yeah. Actually, it makes sense. I mean, like, to contextualize it, right, is that people are saying that, like, or it's okay lah, there are all these alternative roads. I don't need to be the best at studying. I can be the best at practical stuff. But if this is the system that is in place and you're not doing well enough... Yeah. Are you not trying hard enough? Yeah. yeah. Essentially, like, give it a go first. Like, don't, don't think that, hey, actually there's this alternative way and then you just jump into that. Well, but then you also don't know if you don't try, ma. What do you mean? No, man. I mean, you, yeah, okay, you can approach it with the, like, I'm just going to take away whatever I take away from it. It might not be what the system dictates is ideal, right? Like, mm. if you're, even if you don't score well, whatever, but there are other better takeaways, right? Mm. Like networking and whatnot. But then, what are the alternatives? Which is why I think most schools need to be very serious when like, okay, sure, we have all these normal subjects, but then we also have like, say, music class, right? They need, it needs to be a little bit more serious in terms of actually testing whether this is good for the, ch- uh, for the child or not. Uh, essentially. For the ch- chicken. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, but it's quite similar. Chicken, no. Like, this is quite similar to what I mentioned in the previous episode, right? Where like, if you look at the US uh, university education system, right? Your first year on, at liberal arts is that you really try everything first before mm-hmm. you actually major. As opposed to deciding what your major is and then you jump into it. But I think what stands out about the comment is the mention of like, don't glorify not giving your best, right? So like, but must I give my best in a set scenario? Because if I'm going out of that, right, I'm also giving my best in doing, going down a path that is unconventional. I guess if that's your best though. But I think many times it's like the participation trophy, right? Right, I, but isn't life a participation participation trophy? No, but it's not. like you try your best at something, but it's everything else that you get along the way that is your takeaway, man. That is the life experience. But it, that's the thing, right? Like, like I think like Americans talk about like little leaks now, like whether or not you win a tournament, everyone gets a medal. But that's quite bad because it's telling nice. you that no matter yeah. how bad you do, you will get rewarded for it, which is not what life is about. You will get of our life shit on. Okay. <laughs> I guess there's really two schools of thought, right? There are people that work really hard or they genuinely improve the lives of many people and hence are enjoying the fruits of their labour. And then there's a group of people that because of generational, systemic generational issues, they have no access to contribute to the same level that they have. Mm. And so they come to a realisation no fault, through no fault of theirs that maybe life shouldn't be this painful and difficult and troublesome because I can choose to be happy. Hit school then don't study, oh. Right, then maybe I can make that decision and that's okay too. And I feel like those two people can never agree in that sense. Ma. Right. Hey guys, if you like this episode of Daily Catch Up Podcast, remember to drop us a sub, hit that notification button, and like this video. We'll see you next one. Have a great day. I've never tried that one before. Have a great day. I hope you do. Lah. <laughs>